This week we are reading from the chapter of uh, Acts 5. So that's where we'll be spending a few minutes tonight to take a look about at Acts chapter 5. While you're turning there, um, I'd like to remind you that we are also having been um, look at specific points from these chapters. So as you're reading every day, you have a different thought that you can think about as you read, a different focus. If you're not aware of that, that's being posted on our YouTube, our Facebook, and our website. So please take advantage of that, share that, spread that around. So there's my plug. Acts chapter 5. Um, as you're reading through this, there's a pretty strong comparison between two groups of Christians in this chapter. The first one is Ananias and his wife Sapphira at the beginning of Acts chapter 5. At the end of Acts chapter 4, we see that the Christians are um, selling possessions, houses, land, um, pooling their resources and giving to those Christians who are lacking in supplies. And as Ananias and Sapphira are singled out at the beginning of Acts chapter 5 as having a piece of land, and they're selling it, and they devised a plan to where they would appear more generous than they actually were. We pick it up in verse 2, and he, Ananias, kept back part of the proceeds, his wife being aware of it also, and brought a certain part and laid it to the apostles' feet. But Peter said, said Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing his words, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. Great, great fear came upon all those who heard these things. Skipping to verse 7. Now came about three hours later that his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. And then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young man came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, and buried her by her husband. So here are two Christians. They believed in Jesus. They were baptized into his death. They were giving to the needs of others within the church and they were killed for their actions. The second group I want to look at is the apostles themselves. They've been preaching, they were working miracles, people were being saved, and the Jewish leaders were not happy about this and threw, threw the apostles in prison and commanded that they stop preaching in the name of Jesus. Let's look at verse 29. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. And then skipping to verse 40, um, we find that they took the apostles out and they beat them. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And so they, the apostles, departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So here is a group of Christians who likewise also believed in the death of Jesus, were baptized, and they were spiritually successful. So what's the difference between these two groups? Obviously, it's their hearts. And in Nice and Sapphira, while they believed and they had been baptized, they weren't right. They did not possess the correct heart. They sought the praise of men. They sought to elevate themselves over the rest. And perhaps there was some material greed in their motivations as well. We know from Romans 12 that our hearts need to be changed. Their hearts were not changed. They were not transformed. It didn't reflect the sacrifices that Jesus made for us. We know from Galatians 5 that we need to put away the works of the flesh and produce the fruits of the Spirit. We don't see this in the actions of Ananias and Sapphira. They had the appearance of religion, but they didn't have any of the substance. The apostles, on the other hand, had been transformed in their hearts. They had denied themselves. They were rejecting earthly comforts. They were rejecting human approval, and they were giving of themselves to the cause of Christ. 
Their heart was no longer conformed to the ways of the world. They were living sacrifices to God, and they were imitating the ways of Jesus Christ. And the power of gospel that both Ananias and Sapphira and the apostles had encountered had changed the hearts of the apostles in ways that we don't see present in the hearts of Ananias and Sapphira. There's a clear result in the end result of these two types of hearts. For Annas and Sapphira, who did not allow the gospel to take deep root and grow in their hearts in the way that it should have, they were killed for their hypocrisy. On the other hand, the apostles rejoiced in the peace of God and then continued to serve him faithfully. Now, how has the gospel changed us as Christians? It's important for us to self-reflect on this from time to time to make sure that we're doing as we should. As the power of God to salvation, the gospel should cause a change in our hearts, each and every one of us. Have we allowed those changes to take deep root and produce the fruits of the Spirit? Are we seeking to please God as the apostles were when they were teaching and preaching to others to save them? Or are those changes only superficial and temporary as we see in the hearts of Ananias and Sapphira? end result of our lives is going to be directly based upon how our hearts and lives have been changed for God when we encountered his gospel, the power of salvation in Jesus Christ. Are we going to receive the gift of the eternal life because our hearts were changed? Or are we going to be departed from God forever into eternal darkness because our hearts were hardened and stubborn and resistant to the change of the power of the gospel? Are you ready to answer that question tonight? Have you been changed by the power of the gospel, or are you simply going through the motions, the appearance of religion, without any of the substance? Maybe, maybe you've never been baptized. You've never encountered the power of the gospel in the first place. Now is the time to respond. Now is the time to follow Jesus. We want you to possess salvation. We want you to experience that change and produce the fruits of the Spirit as the apostles did, as every true Christian does. If you need help, if you need encouragement, if you need prayers, if you need to be baptized, if you want to know more, let us know. We want to help you. Just come forward and let us know what we can do to do that as we stand and sing.